I'm sure most of you saw the public back and forth between Lucas Brown and his promoter Ricky Hatton recently and this has been going on for years Lucas Brown and Ricky Hatton have always had a frosty relationship I think it's fair to say with Lucas Brown publicly criticizing Ricky Hatton on numerous occasions over the years and the latest occasion was was it last week or the week before he was saying that Ricky Hatton ain't answering his calls and so on and so forth after the defeat to Dylan White and Ricky Hatton in an interview on IFL said that he wasn't happy with the condition that Lucas Brown came in for the Dylan White fight. He was disappointed in him. So, yeah, their frosty relationship continues. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But it appears that Lucas Brown's next fight is not going to involve Ricky Hatton or it will have minimum Ricky Hatton involvement because it's not a Ricky Hatton show. Okay, His next fight is going to be against Roger Izonrate. On July 29th in Sydney. So this will be a homecoming for him. And I'll get onto the opponent in just a second. But the promoter is Paul Nasari. If we go here to the event. Let's have a look now. Yeah, Paul Nasari, okay, is the matchmaker. And neutral corner promotions, Paul Nasari is the promoter. So no involvement from Ricky Hatton. Other than maybe... I don't know, signing off on some paperwork? I have no idea. Anyway, let's move on to the actual opponent. Uh, Lucas Brown, 25 and 1. He must be pushing 40 years old now, Lucas. How old is he? 39. Yeah, so he's a year shy of 40. Taking on Roger Azonrate. Now, as soon as I saw the name Azonrate, I flashed back to the 90s heavyweight fringe contender, David Azonrate whose name was shortened and, and uh, I guess you could say angl anglicized, but certainly shortened to David Aizon. And he was a Nigerian heavyweight fringe contender who fought David Tua. Tua stopped him, I think, in the final round. And that was actually a, a decent fight, David Aizon versus Tua. So I thought, surely that can't be a relation of David Aizon, because Aizon was around in, you know, the 90s so is this a brother or something maybe it's his son that's what I was, I was thinking maybe it's, maybe it's his son but then why would his son if it is his son his son must be very young why would he be fighting Lucas Brown I don't know anyway I found out that Roger Azonrate is actually David Aizon's brother it is actually his brother so I was thinking wow he he must be old how the how old is Roger Azonrate because <laughs> David Aizon was as I say a contender in the 90s so this, this weren't recent that David Aizon, Aizon was around fighting David Tour and what have you. And David Aizon also, I think, was in... Uh, he was in the Olympics, I'm sure. David Aizon was in the Olympics. Um, anything it says about here? No, but I'm sure David Aizon was in the Olympics for Nigeria at, at some point in his career. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I went to the Wikipedia... Wikipedia. I went to the box rec here to click on... Roger Isambrate's record and I'm thinking wow this guy must be as old as the hills and indeed he is as old as the hills <laughs> he's as old as dirt yeah 42 years old but he looks more like 52 is he really 42 is he Dave David Isambrate's younger brother or is it his older brother man he look old <laughs> I mean the beard don't help but he, I mean he look old anyway 42 years old he look old for a man of that age um if you have a look at his record, he's a bit of a habitual loser. Lost to Bob Mirovic back in 2002. Okello Peter. Is that the brother of Sam Peter? It might be, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. No, it can't be. No, he's Ugandan. Okay. No, it can't be the Ugandan. I've, 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 where did it? I've seen this Okello Peter guy before from Japan. Who's he fought this? Old? Let me not get sidetracked here, people, but I'm sure I've seen this Okello Peter guy before, this uh, Ugandan. Uh, anyway, so he lost to Okello Peter, Colin Wilson. These are the old school Australian heavyweights he's losing to here. So he's getting beaten by anybody of any slight quality. So he's lost to Colin Wilson, Wilson twice. That's not good. John Tupu. Is that Bowie Tupu's brother? I don't know. So this guy's been around for a long time, since 2000 when he turned pro. So he's been 18 years a pro. Jeez. And he never really went anywhere. 
He lost to Shane Cameron back in 2006. Then he then he had a 10-year layoff. Can you imagine? 10-year layoff from 06 to 2016. Came back and beat Bob Mirovic in a rematch. Wow. Managed to get a split decision over Big Bob. I guess Father Time caught up with Big Bob and uh, Izombrite being slightly younger, it helped him finally get the win over Big Bob. <laughs> he fought Big Bob back in 2002. Lost fifth round KO and then fought him again the rematch 2016 14 years later and beat him on a split decision over 6 uh, had a dr technical draw with Alex Leopai in a fight that he was losing soundly so this should be food really for Lucas Brown even a Lucas Brown who's as shot worn as he seems to be at the moment Brown's only lost one fight and Brown has had better form in his career. Even a, even a prime Roger Rosonrate, you would imagine, wouldn't be much of a match for Lucas Brown. So, yeah, this guy should be food for Brown. 6-5, 11 KOs out of 12 wins. So, perhaps he can punch a little bit. And if Lucas Brown has any residual demons or doubts in his head following the devastating knockout loss to Dylan White, then it might show up in this fight. We'll see. So, yeah, if any of you who are interested in the career of Lucas Brown and drop your comments in the comment section below. One thing I will say is that Ricky Hatton, in his interview of IFL TV, talked about the fact that Lucas Brown was actually on antidepressants going into the Dylan White fight. And he found this out after the fight because you have to sign a medical disclosure with most boxing commissions before you go into a fight you have to tell them exactly what medication you're on and Ricky Hatton said he found out after the fight that Brown had been taking antidepressants and I did wonder you know with Lucas Brown when I saw him going into the Dylan White fight he didn't seem himself you know he seemed very flat and very sullen and he just didn't seem very animated at all and antidepressants maybe can do that to you. I mean, if you're depressed in the first place, it's not good to be going into a fight depressed. And then taking antidepressants, you know, I've never taken antidepressants, but I know people who have, and they say that it's kind of like a fake happiness that they give you, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I, I can't imagine it's good being on that, those kind of mind altering medications going into a fight. It's like when Mike Tyson fought Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson was on some medication. I don't think it was an antidepressant that he was on. It was something to do with uh, curbing his aggression, maybe, which is, a, again, a terrible thing to be on going into a boxing match, something that's going to curb your aggression. So, yeah, anyway, let me know what you think about this whole situation in the comment section below. Can Lucas Brown do anything in the rest of his career? Uh, have you ever seen Roger Isomrite fight? Let me know how you feel in the comments, people. It's Hatman, I'm out.